Now that we know how to find the mean for a relative frequency distribution, like we found in the last video, we want to find the mean for a frequency distribution, and this time for grouped data. That is, data sets that are um, for continuous data, like the time between eruptions. So let, before we get into that, let's remind ourselves of a definition from Chapter 2, which is the class midpoint. So when you have grouped data, what you're doing is you're grouping the data into bins. So you're saying, okay, here's, for example, 40 to 49 minutes, 50 to 59 minutes, and so on. So I'm kind of lumping everybody between 40 and 49.9999999, because technically this goes on like this forever. We don't write it that way most of the time, but it does. So when I do that, um, when I group it into those bins, I need a single number that's going to represent the middle of that class. That'll be the best number to use, and that's called the class midpoint. Now, it's the number in the middle of the class, but where a lot of students go astray is they think, oh, if it's in the middle, I'll just take 40 and 49 and add them up and divide by 2. Oh, contraire. The problem is that it's really 49.9999999 forever, which you can't add that up because you'll never stop typing the 9s. So what you do is you take consecutive lower class limits. Now, remember from Chapter 2, lower class limits are things like 40, 50, 60, and so on. And consecutive means one after the other. It means next, if it's a fancy word for next. So you take one lower class limit and the next lower class limit. So I, I could do it for the first group. This is 40. That's the first lower class limit. Let me highlight it. The next lower class limit is 50. So I'll take 40 plus 50. I'll add them up and divide by 2. And when I do that, I would get 45. And that becomes my class midpoint. So you take 40 plus 50, divide by 2. And if you want to see it on a calculator, parentheses, 40 plus 50, close your parentheses, divide by 2, 45. Okay. Then to find the next one, you would take 50 and 60, add them up and divide by 2. So 50 plus 60 added up, divide by 2, would get you 55. Or, let me show it to you on the calculator. Oop, divide by 2, 55. Now you might notice there's something going on here. 40 and 50 are 10 apart. 50 and 60 are 10 apart. 60 and 70 are 10 apart. Which means you can actually use something called the class width, and that's what I wrote right here. You could use the class width as an aid. It won't find all of them for you, but it'll find a lot of them without having to do this whole calculation jazz that we had to do in the middle right here. So you gotta find one of them with the calculation. Then you can kind of use the class width to find the rest of them. And then the last class is an open-ended class. Open-ended means that it kind of is just 100 and beyond, right? 100 plus. They do that a lot with ages too sometimes. And what I'll do is I'll just treat it as if the class is continuing, that, that width is continuing on. So 105 is what I'll call it. Now I need to know the total here. So I found the midpoints. Now I'm going to need the entire total in order to be able to find, um, well, actually, I don't need it. Not yet, at least. I will need it eventually. I'll need it down here. But before I get into that, let's let's look at what I was doing. So this is a picture I took myself. Um, this is Old Faithful, just about to erupt. And you can't see it, but over to my left, there are two kids that have been waiting for like an hour, um, being yelled at by their mom the entire time. So that was fun not. <laughs> so you're sitting there waiting for Old Faithful to erupt and you're thinking, how long am I going to have to sit and wait and listen to this woman yell at her kids before Old Faithful will erupt? I want to see Old Faithful erupt. It's in all the cartoons with, with um, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. So you're just sitting there waiting and you want to know how long you got to wait. Um, people drive up just to see Old Faithful. So how long do you have to sit there at Yellowstone waiting for this um, geyser to erupt before you can go walk around the boardwalk and see other geysers? So what we're trying to find is that average. So the population would be the waiting times, the times between eruptions for all eruptions of Old Faithful, or heck, even all eruptions of Old Faithful in the last 50 years or something. So it's how long people have to sit around listening to people yell at their kids. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a little bit bitter from that experience. <laughs> Poor kids. I felt bad for the kids, honestly. Um, I'm sure they were rats in the car, I'm sure, but... At that time, the mom was being more of a brat than the kids. Anyway, so it's the waiting times between all eruptions, how long people have to sit around and wait. But the sample is the waiting times for our group of eruptions. So if we add up those numbers, 
let's see here. So I'll have 44 plus 23 plus 6. There we go. Oops, plus 8. Forgot about that one on the top. That gets us 200. So our sample size is 200. So it's the waiting times between a random sample of Old Faithful eruptions, and that would be 200 times. That was our sample size. Which, remember, the symbol for that is little n, n equals sample size. All right, now, what was the modal class between eruptions? Well, the modal class is the, the class, remember, these are the classes over here that occurred the most often, the most frequency, which is rather obviously this class right here, 80 to 89, because it has the highest frequency of 107. So 80 to 89 is our modal class. It was minutes, that was the unit. So better give it that unit. There we go. Now, the time between eruptions is what kind of data? Remember that from section 1.1. This is the time, like stopwatch time. So it stops erupting and then you start a stopwatch. Actually, the park rangers start a stopwatch and then they wait and wait and wait for the next eruption to occur. So how long do they have to wait? That's stopwatch time. That's very much a quantitative continuous kind of a thing, right? Um, stopwatch time is always continuous because it can have seconds, milliseconds, et cetera, et cetera. And it is also ratio because you can't wait a negative amount of time no matter what the movies will have you believe. You can't go back in time before the eruption. So that means it has no negatives. When it has no negatives possible, that's ratio. And the unit of measurement is, of course, minutes. We already said that up above, so that's fine. Now we need to find the mean time with the calculator and the median. So what I want to do is I want to take this table. Now I can't use the whole table because I can't type this these classes into my calculator. I mean, for one thing, 100 plus doesn't even exist. And second of all, if I try to type this, the calculator is going to think I want 50, take away 59, which isn't what I mean at all. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to type the midpoints into L1, L1, and the frequencies into L2 in my calculator. So let me grab the calculator and you go to stat. You can either press number one or just press enter for edit. Now I want to go up and I want to clear out this old data set. So I'm going to press up so that L2 is dark. Press clear, enter. And then go over here, up, clear, enter. There are other ways to accomplish that with the calculator, but that works fine. I'm going to type 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. And then I'll we'll go to the right with my right arrow over here. And then I'll type the frequencies in L2. Now, if you don't see L1 and L2, that means you've deleted them. Um, you should go on my YouTube channel and look for some videos about how to um, deal with errors in the calculator. Um, basically, you use the INS button, insert, and you insert a column back at the top. Um, for example, here, I'll just show you real quick. Let me delete this column. So L3, ooh, look, L3 is gone. So I go up to the top to L4 and I go second INS. It's going to insert a column. It wants to know what you want to name it. I'll press second three, which is L3, enter. And there it is again. All right. Now I press stat, calculate. I pick number one, one variable stats. My list of data is in the midpoints. That's L1, so second one. I'm going to use my down arrow. And then my frequency list, that's the frequencies, that's L2, so second, two, enter. And press enter on calculate. And there it is. The mean is 74.85 minutes, because that's our unit here. And then if I scroll down just a little bit, the median is 85 minutes, right there, MED median. So let me put those right into the notes right here. So the mean was 74.85 and the median was 85, all in minutes. That's our unit here. Done. Now, are those values that we found parameters or statistics? Well, definitely statistics. We didn't have all the eruptions of Old Faithful for all time. That's what it would take to be population parameters. Parameters are when you have the whole population. We do not have that. All right, now let's find the variance and the standard deviation. 
Well, standard deviation, remember since this is a sample, we want S. That's the sample standard deviation. So that's 14.716 or so. Now the variance the calculator doesn't find. Ah, but the calculator can find it for you if you use the variables button. So you press variables. You go to number five. See number five statistics? You press five. And see number three, that's your SX, your standard deviation. The last standard deviation your calculator found, you press squared, enter, and there it finds it for you. It's either that or you type it in yourself. So if I press variables, five, number three, enter. So if I wanted to, I could take 14.715988 and square it myself. Of course, the more that I round, the lower this is going to be. So if I took 14.72 and I squared it, that would be less accurate, right? See there, I get to 16.68 or so. So if I keep all the decimal places of accuracy by using that variables area in the calculator, that really pays off. So the standard deviation was 14.716 minutes, and the, the variance, which is S squared, is about... Um, to 16.56. Technically it's an approximation, so I should have approximation signs in there. Now, why are those values approximate? Because I use the word here, approximate, in case you missed it. I have approximate here, I have approximate here. Why do I say approximate? What am I getting at? Well, if you remember, when we went into stat and edit, we didn't actually have the raw data. I don't actually know what any of the times of these eruptions are. I know I have eight in this bin. I know I have 44 in this bin. But because the data was grouped together, I don't know what any of it really is. And what's more, I used midpoints for the whole thing anyway, right? So since I'm using midpoints, that makes it even worse. So not only did I not know what even more, but then I rounded them all to the same number. And I rounded all 44 of these to the same number. I wrote it all 23 of these to the same number. So that makes it even worse. So I didn't even have the real data. And even if I did, um, I used midpoints for it. So all of that means that it made it very approximate. So let me see what I wrote up here. So because we do not know the values of the original data, it was grouped into bins. Um, but we use midpoints to make our calculations, which means automatically our means, median, everything we're finding with the calculator is approximate, not accurate. I mean, it's okay, it's, it's approximate, but it's not perfect. Now, if you were to arrive at Old Faithful, how long do you expect to wait? Well, that's what the mean and the standard deviation kind of tell you. The mean tells you you're going to wait about 74.85 minutes, and the standard deviation for our purposes right now is basically the give or take, give or take 14.716 minutes. That's what the mean and standard deviation get interpreted as. So you'd say, okay, I expect to wait 14, um, if I arrive at Old Faithful right now, I expect to wait 74.85 minutes, so more than an hour, give or take about 15 minutes, 14.72 minutes. All right, last but not least, if I, what should I mention when I discuss these times between eruptions? Because there's something going on here. And you can kind of see it when you look at this right here, these numbers, it's low, and then it creeps up to a high number, and then it goes back down. And you can also see it here, the mean is much lower than the median. I mean, there's a big difference between waiting 85 minutes and 75 minutes, trust me, um, when you're watching those kids, right? And that's because the data are a bit skewed to the left. And you'd probably want to discuss that whenever you were discussing this data set. So it appears most of the time that you're going to wait in that modal class of 80 to 85 minutes. Um, there's also a couple clumps. Um, there's kind of smaller eruptions. The way geysers work is that they'll sometimes let off steam after a short while, but it won't be as big an eruption. And then they'll wait a really long while, and that'll be a bigger eruption. So if you wait longer, you tend to have bigger um, eruptions, though the water tends to go higher than if you wait a shorter amount of time. And that's what I wrote right here. So the data skewed left, so that's one thing to talk about. And also it seems that there's a couple big clumps at the lower level and then at the higher level, which is very much the way geysers work. All right, we're all done with section 3.3. I'll see you back here for section 3.4.